Greetings, mortals! I am the Fallen Shogun, and welcome to the Who's an Indie Strategic Tactical Survival Indie Games to your face holes. Today's impression, thanks to developers for the code, is The Last Spell, which is a roguelite tactical game. You are controlling a team of heroes, and you're fighting tens of thousands of undead. That's a lot of them. Now, I did have, like, multiple days in the game, but it looks like it's preparing for actually early access release, because I've sat down to record, and it's reset itself. And I don't remember this introduction. War. For centuries the world was engulfed in never-ending strife and chaos. Elves fighting dwarfs. Dwarfs fighting men. Orcs fighting everyone. Typical orcs. The common folk was bled dry. Poverty. Famine. Disease. Secluded in his tower, researching forbidding, forbidden magic secrets. The Archmage Hieronymus Teller has made an extraordinary discovery. A wild, unknown type of magic filled with tremendous power. Guess what's going to happen? Spells of mass destruction capable of obliterating any city in one strike. Yeah, I wonder what happened there. Driven by the hope of ending all wars, he launched a spell on a small village. A gigantic dark ball of purple flames fell from the sky and smashed into the town's centre. Good leaving only ruin, lifeless bodies, and purple fumes. The whole royal family of a neighbouring kingdom was present at that time. Because that's what they do, you know. Royal families visit villages. Of a neighbouring kingdom. They all died. That's what you get when you randomly look at a village. The king, mad with grief, ordered his mages to research this new magic. Oh, look. An arms race in the magic world. Who'd have thought that would happen? He made his major unleash hell on the neighbouring capital city. Everything's purple. Several hundred thousand died. That's quite a lot of people in a fantasy world. The tremor shook all the kingdom. All of them researched the purple magic. I love purple. The sky was constantly flashing purple bursts. Thundering explosions were heard every hour. War has no more. Only annihilation. There was no turning back. At some point, the explosion stopped. A resounding silence. A strange mist started to aggregate around the remaining cities. And here we go. Small groups of survivors started to gather. The mist around them was thickening. At night, they had to defend against attacks from strange monsters. They called them clawers. We called them undead. They appointed a leader, the commander. That's me, with the beard and the eye. Only one eye, though. And starts rebuilding roofs and defences. Why roofs and defences? A new haven. We don't have walls with one roofs. Most mages were hanged, or worse, in retribution. Some of them, fearing their lives, tried to find an answer. They found a way, a spell. The last spell. We're going to send them back. They built a circle of power to channel their combined magic. The goal was simple, yet nearly impossible. Channel enough energy to summon and break the seal of magic and banish all magic from this world forever. When it comes the night, terrifying mutated creatures come out of the mist to kill. The survivors only hope is to fight night after night and protect these mages at all costs until the last spell is cast. So what I'm hopefully going to do is, I'm going to show... So what I'm going to do is, hopefully, show you briefly how the game works. I'm also obviously talk over this. So basically, you have a city. No, not even any basic walls. And you have three heroes. And the enemy will start attacking you from one side in the first night. Then obviously more sides as the night goes on. And they will attack in their hundreds. And every single time you successfully complete a night, the fog they spawn out of gets a tile closer. Your heroes are turn-based. They have four points. Action points, which is what they could do. You can see at the bottom here, each thing requires one action. Mana points, obviously use their more powerful spells. This one requires two action points and two mana. And movement points. And there are multiple different classes. As you can see, it's a 16 mana. They usually always start with eight movement and four action points, unless there's specifics in their gear which say otherwise. But yes, nearly always between 7 and 8 movement, 4 action points, obviously the mana change depending on the class. I have a warrior here, this is a mage carrying a shield, 
I'm sure while you're carrying a shield, we'll just take that off you. And of course, we have an archer. Now, you do start with different gear. So obviously, you move around. Your goal is to stop the enemy from getting inside the city and destroying the last spell, which is the mages in the middle. There is a roguelite component to it as well. Now, the game is in three separate phases, although one of them is pretty rubbish. So the night, there's a night combat phase, which you see right now. So move up. Let's just do this and start getting some hits on them. Out of range. There we are. So there's a night combat phase you're seeing right now. There's the... Duh, 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 duh. Okay. Line of sight's in the, the problem, that's what the issue is. So you have line of sight as well, you just saw it happen now. I couldn't actually hit this guy, because then you can see it's greyed out. It's where I should be able to attack, but not there. But there's three phases in the game. There's a night combat phase where you have to fight. There is the building phase. Which obviously allows you to heal your guys, build up your city and so on. Then there's the deployment phase, but the deployment phase is pretty useless because you can also deploy your people in the building phase, which is a weird one. Here they come, look at that lot. So the enemy is destroying you. Like I say, there is panic. City panics when enemies are in the city or building, it's doing walls as damage. So the more panic you get, the less rewards you get. You see these little markers up here? The further along this bar is, the less rewards you get. This one guarantees you an item. So you want to be able to destroy as many as possible without, you know, them stopping you from getting an item. Let's destroy him. Actually, that one. There we go. There we are. I wonder if they feel pain. I do. Hit that. And your people do not regenerate that much health each time. Like, very, very little health. So you want to be able to kill as many of them as you can, but as I can say, well, so inside you start getting panic. When you destroy buildings, you start getting panic. And destruction. You want to be able to keep them as far as possible, because otherwise you lose good rewards. Now the roguelite section of this is, there are two permanent currencies in the game. One of them is souls. You kill the enemies, you gain souls. Which is a weird one, but there you are. And you give them to the darkness goddess, which was a thing. Obviously I now have to make sure it's a thing. And the other one is just achievements. So you gain buffs and upgrades to what you're doing through either doing achievements, like using four workers at a night, or killing 500 enemies. Or... By sacrificing the souls of the dead, which gives you a different kind of bonus. Which we'll be showing, of course, in a second anyway. Rain of arrows. Do it. Now, the enemies stop appearing after a while, because it's now 36. But you don't ever get small numbers of these guys. You'll never be fighting one or two. You'll always be fighting one or two hundred. I think there's like 70 this time on wave one. So he's going to hit automatically. Here we go. Now your characters can level up. Okay, that one. And I would definitely say you should be leveling them up. Okay, that one and that one. And obviously there's different types you can actually mouse over them. Like some of them are faster than others. There's ones with abilities. So you wouldn't be able to kill them all off. But of course, you don't really have to deal with too many of those at the beginning. Hit that one. Good. Go there, hit these two. Uh, go there, hit that one. Pull back. Uh, hit those. He's out of mana and ability points. Okay, so he's purple. He's creating panic. That's the panic icon, as you can see up here. We don't want him to be creating panic. Because I really, really, really want to get the item. The item's of course good, and otherwise you have to buy them or make them. 
But now as you can see, there's a few of them, and I'm taking a lot of damage. Because you are not going to win the first few times you play. It's a roguelike. Or roguelite. You are going to take significant damage. Like majorly significant damage. To the point where you cannot survive. Like one of the first upgrades you can get is adding items, adding weaponry. One of them is giving your guys another action point so they can do five actions. Which is obviously pretty big. Another one is just making them do a little bit more damage. As you can see, these guys are dodgers because they literally dodge. They need to die. And most of the time you'll miss. Okay, he's done the stuff. Hit him. Okay, make yourself more dodgy. There we go. Two heroes didn't move. Yeah, I know they didn't move. Okay, I don't want really to use any more of my mana. So, mana and health are permanent. You can upgrade your character to ha have more regeneration of mana or health per battle. But you only get it when you start the next battle. So, having... A lot of spells be used means you're probably not going to do too well in the next battle, which is obviously a bit of a problem. A bit of a big problem. Now, that was obviously the first thing, nighttime. And now we go to the next phase, daytime. See, my guys have never talked about it. B. Oh, really? B? I got an S for the first time I played this. As you can see, it's giving me my rewards. And an item. Perfect. Oh, I've got an S there at least. An A in total. Thanks, game. As you see, the fog has moved closer. Now, during the day, let's just skip this, just show. You can do several things. You can level up your heroes, which I recommend, and they get two upgrades per time primary and secondary, which we all see. Now, you can obviously, the colour of them shows common, uncommon, there's obviously rare and stuff like that, but you have to give them to what your character is. This character is basically doing physical damage. It's all physical damage. So even though I have a rare upgrade for Wanda, magic damage is not going to be useful for them. Armour is though. So you get a common armour. So just because it's uncommon, you shouldn't go for it. Reliability, let's see. Daily mana regen to 5. You weren't really using that much of your mana, were you? Let's get a stun chance going on. Alcoholic, less health. See, that's an issue. Less health, less resistance. And the perk we're going to pick, they all get the same perks. Yeah, let me know it didn't move. Uh, let's go for... Get the punch. Let's go for critical. So yeah, you'll obviously make sure you're going well. So this is my archer. I would have good range damage. Oh, that is very rare to get uncommon for the range. And more experience. They level up faster. And their perk, I would have to just get even more XP. So I can level up even more. And obviously a wizard. Anything magic. Nothing. Alright, move points. Why not? Propagation damage. Multiply times to bounce propagation skill effect. Don't have any propagation skills on this character. I'll take it though, just in case. And he's going to get more XP as well. Now, once you do that, you get your knight reward. Usually, you know, you probably don't get one. And you get to see which character gets it. So you get a random choice of three. You only get to keep one. Three mana plus two daily mana regen. That's even more armor, but less movement points. That's 25 extra health. 15 armor. Uh, I think my mage needs the mana and the mana regen. I'm going to take that for you. Go to I, put it on you. There we are. Obviously, you can build new structures. So, how you go things about is you can build houses, which you don't have unlocked at the beginning, and you can use them to get workers. So, I'm going to upgrade this to get extra worker. And you use your workers to man certain buildings we don't have access to. Or destroy buildings, as you can see here. So, when you destroy that, you can either get gold and materials, or lots of materials and a little bit of gold. Gold is used to buy items. Gold is used to build buildings. Defences, which are the other stuff, is your materials. So, gold is important for your buildings, and materials is used for your defences. So you have to make sure, obviously, you're getting the right stuff.
Okay, we've got some defenses up and running. So we've got a bit of basic defense. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip ahead and show you how show what happens when we lose, because otherwise it's just gonna be the same thing. Now, skipping ahead obviously, this is still night two. Look at the amount of enemies on it. This is just night two. They're pouring round the side. There's already 58 of them on the field. They're still arriving. Battles are not small in this game. You'll be needing four characters. You'll be needing to wipe them out. You'll be needing to unlock inns and upgrades and items and weapons. But you won't have access to them at the beginning. You get them only by this thing which happens when you die. Let's go cut to the dying section. Oh my god, look at this. This is getting tough. So there's already enemy speeds. This is just night three. I let it run, obviously, like I say. And we are already knee-deep in undead. Knee-deep in undead. There's armoured guys. There's speedy runners. There are these massive guys moving in. These guys here have the 200 health, the splitters. They take forever to kill. The armoured guys regenerate their armour. Every single turn. Look at them. See a little bar above? That's their armour. You have to do them again and again and again. Because we don't have a way to successfully keep them dead. Because if we did... We'd probably be several rounds in. So this is officially the end of our little empire. As you can see the purple is very panicked. The previous two, I kept it in. Now you can see they're hitting the uh, thing in the centre. I'm dying. Oh my god. Buildings will be destroyed. And there goes that. So I'm just going to end the turn now. And you get to see what happens when you end the game. Because like I say, it is a roguelite. You will die a lot. Death will be happening a fair bit. And your people, yeah, they die. And they're permanently dead. Obviously, you've got another guy during the same run. You're going to have to recruit another guy. I can't. Look at that. Look at that purple. So, yeah, surviving wave three or night three is a lot of them. And you have to survive ten nights to do the last spell here. Yeah, it's difficult. God, look at their faces splitting open. The magic circle is destroyed. Stormy and Casper. Run number one. And this is what happens. So, the dark one on the left requires souls to upgrade. The other one on the white, the, the right white, the right white, requires achievements. Now they talk to you when you die. Every day they talk to you. Saying nice things like, Rejoice, O Earth, and see, for I have come with gifts in hand. Never trust someone who gives you gifts. Fear not, mortal, I wish thee no harm. I am but a gleam, a mere refraction of what I could become. A whisper in the door, and I was two, but now I am one. No one ever ever deep down and high above. Come with to me whenever thou achieve mighty deeds, reward thou and thy people, as we rejoice. Now go, put your herald of hope, and cometh again. So as you can see, this will unlock. Play the run several times. New Lakeburg Haven now has some initial vestige walls, so I had no walls as you saw. And, this, and as you can see, we now have this. Block shield of damage, get me that one. Which I think I've already unlocked. Yes, I now have shields. Survive a night at or under level 1 of City Panic five times. will get me magic items. This is the Seer building. Release a force eclipse of the enemy horde and repel the mist for a time. That could be good. This will give us house builds. We can actually get more people. This will allow us a scavenger camp so we can pass we get materials. So as you can see, more important things. And there's a lot, a lot of things I can unlock. And there's also a lot on the other side, which of course is soul based on how many people we kill. This one is slightly more manic. Welcome to the Oraculum, Commander. What the? Lower your voice, fool, or you will get us caught and all will be for naught. Where am I? The Oraculum is what I said. Art thou, are you deaf beyond dead? A rather formidable place, if I do say so myself, deep inside your mind, deep inside your head. Who are you? I am the shadows, I am the dark, I'm Batman. I am the pain deep inside your heart. Don't tell the other one, for I will help you. Let it be a little devious secret between me and you. Would you be so kind as partake of those useless souls you collected? So yes, as you can see here, you can literally let go in order to get put souls in. You always get 500 souls the first time, and as you can see, I have upgraded that, that was a thousand last time. I can now get this, mixed weapon slots, which, which obviously I just unlocked. This is armor maker, which is important. This is extra action points as you can see there's a lot to unlock too as you unlock them more start appearing so you have your souls and you have your achievements and then you get back to the world so this this thing here is obviously just lakeburg i think there's other cities as well but every time you die the number goes up 
The first Lake Berg was Lake Berg Zero. You get to see how many times you've died at the same place repeating history by the bloody number next to it, which is always fun. As there is an easy mode you can go through, like as you design a certain difficulty in mind. So you can make it easy, you can choose extra gold, materials, like health, enemy waves, or even an extra hero. You can choose to make it easier for you, depending on how hard it is. But, so, it depends on the person. Obviously, people who want to play it normally, standard easy mode is for those who are having trouble. And you go back in, but now obviously we have access to more weaponry. And this time, let's give him, let's see, let's give him my guy a hammer to start with. And a crossbow. Like I said, there's different weapon types. And that means this is going to be a much more different fight to last time. Because this guy does air of effect. So many armoured ones. Oops. It's like this. This guy, let's see, he can do blaze damage. This, let's have a look. This one should go here and here. So the thing about the crossbow is, obviously, you can multi-shoot. You can also... Upgrade how many multiple targets you get for actions. So if I wanted to, I could, quite happily, have him shoot three targets with one action. So certain characters can become extremely overpowered. Which in any other game would literally be overpowered. In this game, it's just, oh, you have even more things you can kill. Done them, killed them, done. So yeah. And obviously you want to start getting your souls. It now shows how much tainted essence you get. And you can actually talk to the two goddesses or whatever they are during the day. But of course, anything that says your heroes are generated won't work until the next night. But your goal is survival. And the longer you survive, the more points you have for your next attempt at survival. But let's face it, you will not survive. But at least we now have access to some walls. We have access to a hammer. Not sure how useful that will be, but at least the walls will vaguely stop them. And it also shows you where the edge of your city is, so you know where to keep the enemy out of for that sweet, sweet, sweet early game uncommon weapon. Which you might need, because you can see things are everywhere. Look at them all. Although, it, oh my god, hit there, hit him again. There we go. One, two. God damn it, they dodge so easily. One, two, three, four. But yeah, any other game, you'd be like, oh, hitting hundreds of enemies at once seems a bit, a bit much. No, hitting hundreds of enemies at once might guarantee you to vaguely survive till the next game. She's using mana every time. That one's still alive. Oh my god. So yeah, survive, destroy, survive, murder. The music is good. The action's pretty damn cool. The animations I really quite like. Absolutely like. This game, as of releasing this video, should be out into early access. You'll be finishing this wave. So yeah, if you want to play it, I definitely recommend picking it up. Obviously things will change as time goes by. I pushed the wrong thing. But yeah, as you can see, I'm already doing significantly more damage than I did last time because of the items I now have. The hammer, especially. There we go. That one's actually going to give me a bit of panic, annoyingly. So yeah, pick it up, murder thousands of undead people and try and save your city today. Obviously there will, there will be other cities, I feel, just show me one. But I can only show you this one right now, because like I say, reset. I need to get this out, because I'm going to start streaming this. There will be streams of this happening. Go there, hit him. Not gonna get it, not gonna get it. That's got a pitchfork in their mutated hands. If 
Very imaginative enemy designs. I really do like the designs. There we go. So yeah. Survive, destroy. What's this one? Weak spot, okay. Really? There we are. Still alive! Stunned it at least. I'll take the stun. Weirdly enough, when I first played it, I thought that was uh, more of a high level. I thought they were elite. It wasn't, it was just my hammer guy going insane. As you can see, you can see the health going up, you can see the mana going up. It wasn't much. So death is slow, but inevitable. S rank! Yes! And it's on camera, so I can actually agree with myself in the future. And an item. But yeah, you always want to try and go as far as you can, because you always want the item. And there's the essence. As you can see, you see how well you're doing, and what gets you them. That's how many killed. That's how many 30 distinct enemies, magic spells. And here I apply two debuffs to the same enemy. So yeah. You obviously want as much essence as you possibly can. Anyway, I'm the Fallen Shogun. This has been the last spell. It says I've got enough to unlock. That would be... What was it? The Armoury? Welcome to the... So, I don't understand. Blissed, blissed art thou. I would damn myself for oblivion. Know that we are doomed to this future existence for the next few aeons. Oh. So obviously I want this. An extra action with the crossbow would mean I'm damaging 10 enemies at once. That should be 12 enemies, yeah. Otherwise, you're just doing what you can, so actually I'd want to destroy this. And this. And upgrade that, because I always want the extra people at the beginning. Then I can even do this, let's get rid of that one. And that. But yeah, you always want to make sure you're doing well. You always want to show you're getting that first item. Ooh, epic body armor, look at this! That's my first epic ever. Now we're seeing you in the next Who's and Indie. Strategic tactical survival in the game straight to your face off. Stay awesome, stay epic, stay amazing. And I will of course be seeing you in the next Who's and Indie. Ciao for now. Bye bye.